Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'm going to give you an update on my chili plants here. As you can see they're not doing well at all and I'll go into the reasons behind that and uh, what I'll be doing to try and help them to germinate successfully. So what's happened with my chili seeds is they've been quite slow to germinate to begin with and that was because it's quite cold in my flat. I had a heat map but I'm needing to use that for another project. But they did finally germinate but the problem is I have something called scoured flies or otherwise known as fungus gnats. They're very small black flies which lay the eggs in the soil and then they have small larvae which go after the plant's young roots and they eat the roots off and they're really bad for seedlings. If it's an established plant it can normally survive an attack without too much of an issue but the seedling stage is very susceptible and normally on established plants you can easily remedy the issue by letting the top layer of the compost dry out uh, the fungus gnats larva then dies off and then it's not a problem but obviously with the, this being a seedling I have to keep it evenly damp so it's been a real issue now I'm going to show you a clip now of what the fungus gnats look like um, so if anyone's a bit squeamish doesn't want to see maggots then uh, look away for the next few seconds So as you can see from that clip, they're clustered around um, one of my seedlings. That was this Apache one here. They're all clustered around this little seedling here, eating off its roots, unfortunately. If I take this out, you can see the root doesn't have any side roots on it, which it probably should by this stage, and the top's been nibbled off, so the seed has fallen off and that's going to die, unfortunately. This Piri Piri one as well, it's come above the soil, but it's not really done anything. I'm going to pull it out there, and you can actually see it doesn't have any roots left, it's just the top half, there's no roots left on it, that's again because of the scoured flies. Um, and the Midas hasn't had any germination at all. So after the first week or two that they didn't seem to come up above the soil, I actually tried to germinate some in, uh, in takeaway tubs because this uh, germination method always works pretty much 100% of the time for me. And it did work fine, um, they all germinated but as soon as I put them in here they just stopped growing and they died off. So the only one I've got left now is this Piri Piri one. It's quite a late one to germinate. You can see there it's got uh, just started to grow roots that needs to go into the soil. I'll be planting that one up later on in this video. And the other the other ones have actually uh, used all the, the seeds and put them in here and they finished. Apart from the Midas, for some reason I've had zero germination on the Midas whatsoever. So that's it's not looking like it's a very good batch of seeds. I'm not sure what's wrong with it but there's been zero germination. The other two, I've had 100% germination of the seeds, just the fact they've been eaten off by the scary flies. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to empty these compost, compost from these two pots, wash out the pots, make sure there's no scary flies. Then I'm going to um, start all the seeds by this method. Once they're, uh, they're started to germinate, I'll put them into the soil. That'll give them a slight head start if there are any scary flies left in the compost. I'm also going to give them fresh compost and this time I'll be keeping them completely covered on the top and the bottom. That will stop any scarab flies from laying their eggs in there. And the reason I've got a bad scarab fly um, epidemic at the moment is because of another video I'm doing. I'm doing a video, um, and it's taken a while, I'm doing time lapses on it about basil. And the way that I've set them up is I'm trying to get rapid growth so they're quite constantly moist. And that's just the perfect conditions for um, scoured flies. So that's why there's a few flying around the flat at the moment. And that's why they, these have been badly hit by them. So I've gone and cleaned out all the pots. To make sure there isn't any scoured fly eggs or larvae left in them. What I've also done is I've filled up the Piri Piri one ready to be planted up. I've left these two for now because I don't have any germinated seeds to put in them yet. And uh, I don't want to put any compost in until the last moment. The reason being the longer they're out, the more chance there is the scoured flies might come back again. This compost should be fine, it's been outside and I think it was minus four last night so it's plenty cold enough that it should have killed any larvae off. The eggs might have survived but any larvae would definitely be dead at that temperature. I then ran some hot water through this as well, um, a bit like a coffee killer strainer style, just boiling water through the pot, let it droop out the bottom. That should have sterilised any eggs that might have been in there. So that should be completely free as garret flies now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pot it up with uh, my germinated Piri Piri seed. So to do that, it's a little bit tricky because once they're germinated, the seed is very, very fragile. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some tweezers. I'm going to very carefully pick up the seed, try not to snap the root at all. Like so. Very gently squeezing it. Next, I'm just going to make a small hole in the compost. 
to pop the, the seed into. And I certainly don't want to pop, push the seed down at all because I don't want to snap the root. So I'm just going to place it into the bottom there, just placing it on top, I'm not going to push it down at all. And then very carefully just cover it with some compost. But I'm not going to push down because if I push down it could snap the root off, it's very delicate at this stage. So that now should grow okay. What I will do with that one though is I'll be putting cling film over the top, make sure it's sealed off, at least for the first little while until the plants get its roots down. Once the plant's got its roots down and it's above the soil, I'll just bottom water it and keep the top of the compost quite dry. And that should get rid of any problems with any scarab flies. So the next thing I need to do, because I'm happy that, I'm pretty happy that pretty, pretty seedling will grow no problem, so I don't need to make any uh, special germination chamber for the piri piri but the Apache I need to do more of them the Midas I'm going to give it a bit longer but I might sow a few more seeds of that as well I've got a chamber with it set up with the Midas seeds but they've still not grown yet so um, I might need to put new seeds in because those could be duds it's been over a month now I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to do the uh, the Apache ones as I said before the two Apache seeds did grow um, and they did start to germinate but as soon as I put them in the compost Scarab flies came in and ate them off, so that was the issue with them. But at least the Piri Piri and the Apache have been germinating quite well. Albeit a bit slow, I think the slowness is just because I'm uh, my flat's quite cold at the moment. So I've got two seeds here. And I'm just going to place them on top of the um, tissue paper. What I've done is I've got some kitchen roll. I've just damped it so it's damp, there's no sitting water and what this does is, is it provides the seeds plenty of moisture but without it getting too wet uh, because they've got plenty of uh, air above them they don't really have any problems with waterlogging if you get the soil this wet the waterlogging with, um, would rot them off but because of the, they've got surface area to the open air they're fine and even though it's sealed um, it doesn't do them any harm the reason for that is that the, the oxygen requirements are so low and the air volume inside this container has far more air and oxygen than the little seeds needs. Also, when I open it up every few days to check if there's any new roots, that gives it a bit of airflow, so that helps them as well. So I'm going to try and keep these as warm as possible. As I say, I have got a problem at the moment that I don't have enough heat mats, and it's very cold here in Scotland. My flat is currently about 16 degrees, so it's a bit cold for germination. But I'll try and keep these in the warmest location I can. So it's probably going to be a little while until the next update just because of the slow germination speed to the low temperatures. Hopefully if the weather warms up um, I can have the flat at a higher temperature again. And I'll give you guys another update but it'll probably be at least a month I think because things seem to be going quite slowly. At that stage we'll probably have the first two, the first seed leaves on the, um, the Apache and the Midas hopefully. The Midas I'm still a bit sceptical about just because there's been no germination at all on that. I'm happy I can certainly germinate the Apache. The Piri Piri though, because that's already germinated, it should be above the soil by then in a month. And it should be a decent size. It'll probably be a few centimeters, maybe about this height, maybe five centimeters. And it'll have the seed leaves and it'll have the secondary leaves coming through as well. So I'll give you guys an update in about a month's time.